Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Dilal. This week, we are going to revisit the problems that so many depositors in the Sahara Cooperative Societies have been facing for the last three years. You've been seeing several of our video blogs. So this time, I'm titling it, The Issue of Sahara Refunds, A Silent Regulator and a Mysterious and Confusing Supreme Court Order. Now, you wonder why I'm saying that. You would think it's good news, right? That on 29th March, there was what the government has called a landmark order. So let's go step by step and discuss what happened to that order and why is it confusing. At the outset, in a sense, it's a positive development because the government is actually persuading the Supreme Court that this huge amount of money that's lying with SEBI since, you know, bit by bit since 2012, and there was another landmark order should actually go back to people who had deposits with Sahara. What kind of deposits, bonds, whatever, we'll come to that later. So let's start with the 29th March Supreme Court order. Now, the government of India did something very unusual. The Press Information Bureau issued a press release about the Supreme Court order. This was a public interest litigation in which the government filed an intervention petition and it sought the refund of money deposited with four cooperative societies set up by the notorious Sahara Parivar. Now, the release said that the Supreme Court order had led to the refund of, refund of money to 10 crore investors out of these four cooperative societies. It called it a historic decision and gave credit to the prime minister and to the home minister, who also is the minister for cooperation. And it, talk, it talked about how they had protected the interests of the poor and the underprivileged by this intervention. And the details of this order, like I said, are extraordinary and confusing, and the maths just doesn't add up. Now, let's again reiterate the positives. The press release crediting the government is the first official cognizance of the fact that the Sahara Group, which has been allowed to recklessly collect as much money as it wants by various governments, okay? Various coalition governments over the past 20, 30 years has gone from one controversy to another. They are finally admitting, yes, they have collected a lot of money and they are unable to pay depositors who entrusted their money. Now, we are not talking here about the twin realty companies, which is the subject of another Supreme Court order and the money credited to SEBI. These are four cooperative societies Sahara Credit Cooperative Society, which I'm going to call Sahara Credit. This is the key one, and we're going to keep coming back to it. Sahara Yen Universal Multipurpose Society, Hamara India Credit Cooperative Society, and STARS Multipurpose Cooperative Society. Between the four of them, from 2010 onwards, they picked up a mind-boggling 86,000 crore and they picked up this money even as the group was under intense scrutiny by the market regulator, Securities and Exchange Board of India, the Supreme Court, which was hearing this case that led to a landmark order, and the Serious Frauds Investigation Office, which apparently is continuing to investigate forever and ever. Now, the very fact that the government is willing to say money lying around with SEVI, can on a huge stash, we'll come to that, has to be used to repay depositors who have been running from pillar to post at least for the last three years is a big positive. How is it being done is the problem because the manner in which it's being done may not resolve anything. Regular readers of Money Life have seen innumerable video blogs that we have done every step of the way when something has happened. Those of you who read Money Life would see many articles on the subject. Each development has been covered and we have given details. The PIB release that I talked about earlier has some additional details. It says the Central Registrar of Cooperative Societies has ordered these four to stop accepting deposits. That's news, okay? Because still now nobody would even come forward and say, are you stopping them when they can't repay the depositors who already given their money? So now we know it's finally stopped. Sahara Group, the Central Registrar admits has not honored repayment orders. So the lots of complaints and lots of orders, which have no meaning. Consumer court orders are there. There are cases in the high courts, but none of them have any meaning if Sahara is not in a position to pay. 
and Sahara has been claiming whatever money we had has been stashed with SEBI. Now, the government release, the PIB releases, the central registrar is now trying to hasten this process. It has digitized 122,000 claims, but they are gushing in every day. So new claims are coming in. And the Union Minister for Cooperation, Amit Shah, according to the release, has held meetings with all the stakeholders before this petition was filed in the Supreme Court. What did the petition say? That out of nearly 20,000 crores plus, I'll give you the exact numbers later, 5,000 crores from that, what is called the Sahara SEBI refund account, should be used to pay depositors of the four cooperative societies. Now, remember about 20,000 or 25,000 crore, 25,000 plus crore was raised by two realty companies. They called it optionally convertible debentures. They had not taken regulators' permission. This was in the early days of 2000, 2007, 8. SEBI said this is illegal, went to court, hearings went on for years. And in August 2012, there was a landmark order saying, telling the Sahara Group what you did is illegal. Before that, the Sahara Group had called SEBI a Sarkari Gunda and what have you. But they said, what you've done is illegal. You will repay the money. So how was it going to be repaid? This money had to be put into what is called the Sahara SEBI refund account. And Sahara had to keep paying. They tried avoiding payments. But finally, over 15,000 crore was credited out of 25,000 plus, which they had to give SEBI. They said, we have run out of money. We have already repaid our depositors. We don't need to pay. They have been complaining and grumbling nonstop. But this much money was paid and with interest now that has gone well about 20,000 crore. So out of this, the government said 5,000 crore should be used to refund depositors of four cooperative societies. Do they have a claim? We'll come to that later. But the Supreme Court on 29th March, a bench headed by Justice Amar Shah said this payment will be made under the supervision of a retired judge. And it decided that Justice R. Subhash Reddy will be that judge. And the press release assures us the transparent process will be completed in nine months with legitimate investors being paid through their bank accounts on the basis of proper proof. So they've been talking about 10 crore being paid. We'll come to that later. Why is this order confusing? Because before this landmark verdict, like I said, there is another parallel hearing going on before another bench of the Supreme Court. This is a civil contempt petition filed by SEBI. SEBI versus Sahara, number 412 of 2011. This was to come up for a long hearing. There were lots of intervention petitions there, including one by Money Life Foundation, which is our sister NGO, which has filed it on behalf of a few depositors of Sahara Credit Cooperative Society. And we had a reason for picking up on this one. I'll explain that. The court had issued notices, and these hearings are supposed to happen soon few couple of weeks later, 18, 19, 20th, three days of April were reserved to complete all pending interim applications as well as the main contempt case. Before that, there is this big landmark verdict on 29th of March. Now, legal circles are astonished at this highly unusual development. They say it's very unusual for another bench to hear the Sahara matter when it is already being heard and coming up pretty soon and not only hear it, but hand down such a quick landmark order. It also raises some questions. Was SEBI there? Did it say anything? Did it point out that we have another contempt petition pending? Nothing is known. Everybody is silent. We did try asking, but nobody is speaking. Now, let's go back. The landmark judgments all over the place where Sahara is concerned. Let's go back to August 2012, which brought SEBI into the picture. SEBI had asked these two Sahara companies, I mean, under the Supreme Court order that money was to be collected. I told you it was about 25,000 crore. So 25,781 crore to be precise. And the Supreme Court at that time had said the process of tracing and refunding the money would be supervised by another retired Supreme Court judge, B.N. Agarwal. And that has been going on for 10 years. Remember 2012 judgment, money accrued bit by bit. But we are into 2023. 
By December 2021, Sahara had deposited 15,485 crore into the SEBI Sahara refund account. How many people were paid? Believe it or not, only 138 crore has been paid to people because apparently those are the only ones who could produce legitimate documents that they had subscribed to those optionally convertible debentures of the two companies. Why were there no people coming forward? Because Sahara quickly got them to shift to QShop and to these cooperative societies, which it set up in the North, West, East, and South. So these four cooperative societies, four parts of the country, they quickly got them to change. None of this is being investigated, got into, nobody's interested. SEBI obviously feels, other than optionally convertible debentures, it's not our problem. SFIO, we have no idea what it's doing. It's investigating and investigating. Nothing's coming out of it. Meanwhile, from 2010, even as the Supreme Court hearings are going on, Sahara raised, like I told you, not 86,000, 86,673 crore from over 100 million investors. After 10, 15 years, it's like a Ponzi, they began to default just around the time of COVID. Around 2020, complaints began to pile up with the central registrar. Now, in August, 2022, the government or the finance minister actually in a statement said the number of depositors are 130 million and the amount of money stuck with these six Sahara entities is not 86,673 crore, which was only the cooperative societies, then add the Q shops, then add everything else. It's actually 1.12 lakh crore. I mean, I don't think this happens anywhere in the world that when there is an investigation and a Supreme Court case leading to a landmark verdict, this group brazenly continues to raise money. Nobody is asking questions until it begins to not just default, but default in such a big way that the complaints are in tens of thousands. And then the central registrar who was posted at that time, Vivek Agarwal, looked at it, issued a lot of orders. And there is a particular letter that he wrote of 18th August 2020, which says something interesting from our perspective, that Sahara Credit, one of the four cooperatives, had provided an advance of 2,253 crore to Mr. Shubrata Roy, who is the founder of the Sahara Group. And he in turn transferred that money to the SEBI fund. Why did he do this again? Nobody is asking any questions. We are just picking on facts and stating them. In December 2020, when we heard from a lot of depositors, people wrote to us for help, Money Life Foundation said, okay, let's try and see. Sahara credit depositors have a locus standard because this money went from Sahara Credit Society to SEBI. And surely the Supreme Court did not intend SEBI to sit on over 20,000 crore with interest, of course. It is supposed to come back to people who it's owed to. And these 250, 240-odd depositors who wrote to us, provided proof, pan cards, and certificates, they had a legitimate claim to this 2,253 crore. So we wrote a memorandum, asked SEBI, asked Justice Agarwal. Neither the SEBI chairman nor Justice Agarwal even deigned to reply to us. We filed a RTI application where they finally told us that the judge, Justice Agarwal, had said the matter could only be decided by the Supreme Court and closed it. Nobody thinks it's worth telling us what happened. We don't matter because we are stakeholders. They are the Raja, we are the Praja. SEBI's internal notes, again, as part of this RTI, it showed that contrary to what Mr. Vivek Agarwal, who's a central registrar, had said, SEBI had discovered not 2,253 crore, but just 571.96 crore deposited between 5th June 2014 and 13th June 2014. This is important. We'll come to it later. And But 571.96 crores is not a small amount. It would have been enough money, but SEBI was not interested. Just washed its hands off and waited. We are so lucky that the government thought exactly like us. It said, you are not supposed to sit on this money. Uh, you know, that was never the intention. So instead of this small amount, the government put the number at 5,000 crore. But the government doesn't want 240 or just Sahara credit. They want everybody to get it. So they say depositors of all four will get it. 
on the face of it for what the government is doing, it's fair. We now hear from legal sources that SEBI did not even want to sit on the money. It has apparently told the government, please take this and do what you want to, decide who you want to pay it to, but the government has not allowed it to. We have not seen any sign of this in the public domain, but this is a fairly reliable source. In fact, what we have found is just the opposite. That SEBI is so busy with pointless litigation, one is this contempt case that is filed, and se several other actions which we have reported regularly. So November 2020, it asked, told Sahara, now this money is not 25,000, 15,000 or whatever, it's 62,600 crore because we have been calculating interest at whatever rate. It's funny. Interest accrued on 25,700. Sahara has no money. So pointless order. In June 2022, another pointless order, 12 crore penalty on the two Sahara companies. These companies are defunct. Whatever money they had is with SEBI, but 12 crore penalty. Obviously, Sahara couldn't pay. End of December 2022, SEBI then says, attach the DMAT accounts of the Sahara Group and Shubhra Roy. I don't know what is being achieved, but this is what SEBI is busy with, far from saying, take this 25,000 crore and do what you will. Now let's come to the contradictions and conflicts of this order. This is important if you're a depositor. In the original order of 2012, SEB and what happened on 29th March, it's a big difference. One, the judgment notes that 5,000 crore was to be taken out of this 23,000. Let's round it off to 24, 23,937 crore. That means SEBI is today sitting on about 24,000 crore. Is it 24 or is it another 1,000 crore? We don't know because in the same order, there are two numbers. That union government said this, but solicitors and General Tushar Mehta said it's 24,979 crore. Frankly, these numbers are mind-boggling, but let's leave it. A few thousand crores here or there doesn't matter. Our bigger focus should be, is it going to come back to depositors whose money was given to Sahara? It again mentions the exact same figure, 2,253 crore, which we got from Vivek Agarwal. SEBI said that money doesn't exist, but now government says it's there. And the Supreme Court order mentions that number. And it says exactly what we said. Sahara Credit had given this money and it was in the SEBI refund account. If SEBI says the amount was not that much, but just 571 crore, don't you think that in a court hearing, the SEBI lawyer should have come forward and said, hello, it's not that much. It is just 571. There is no talk of it because the Supreme Court order says nothing. The PIB press release says nothing. We don't know what figure is true. Contradiction number one, right? But again, notice these are the figures that Money Life Foundation quoted. And the overall action is exactly what we had wanted. Now let's come to the two judges. Funny thing is that in 2012, the Supreme Court had already appointed Justice B. N. Agarwal, the retired judge of the court, to oversee whether directions issued by them were properly and effectively complied with, which one assumes is to see whether people have making applications, can produce proof and return their money. As I told you, hardly 138 crore has been refunded and SEBI is sitting on nearly 24,000 crore. The Supreme Court also fixed a monthly remuneration of 5 lakhs in addition to travel, accommodation, and other expenses commensurate with the status of the office that he held, which will be borne by SEBI and recovered from Sahara. So far, so good. This is 2012. Now, 29th March 2023, 11 years later, another Supreme Court bench has appointed Justice R. Subhash Reddy, another retired judge of the Supreme Court and specified that he'll be paid an honorarium of 15 lakhs per month, in addition to paying 5 lakhs per month to the Micus Curia. Micus Curia means friend of the court, Mr. Gaurav Agarwal, who's going to help through, look at this process of ensuring that the right people with legitimate claims get the money. Now, question is, how are these two judges going to work together? Did SEBI not step up and tell the Supreme Court, please clarify the role and function of the two judges. And why did I mention their honorariums? It's important because do we go by seniority? One is assuming that Justice Agarwal is senior because he retired earlier. Or do we go by who's being paid more, which is how corporate India would work, right? Somebody who's being paid an honorarium of 15 lakhs 
is the one who should be heading it. Nothing has been clarified. In fact, it's not even clear whether the bench which decided the 29th March order even knows that there is another judge who's still looking at it. Nothing is clear. Regulator silent. Remember, it's 29th March. We are doing this on 5th of April. Complete radio silence from the regulator and everyone concerned. With all these contradictions and confusion, how realistic is it to assume that depositors are going to get their money back in nine months and 10 crore depositors? I mean, remember, it's only 5,000 crore at the end of the day. This order is only about 5,000 crore. SEBI is sitting on 24,000 crore, even after having paid 138. Sahara has raised minimum of 86,600 from the four cooperatives. And if you include other companies like the Q shop and whatever, the government itself says it's 1.12 lakh crore. So my point is we have a great landmark judgment, but we are most likely not going to have results. We have more confusion and the need for more clarification. Typically, it'll all go back to court. So we'll all wait and watch. Meanwhile, sadly, the depositors, even after a nice idea is accepted, will probably continue to wait and suffer. If you agree with what I'm saying, make sure you spread this because a lot of people need to know that there are questions, they have not been answered, and that there are clarifications required. You need to get people who matter to clarify things fast, especially if you're a depositor and you want your money back. Thank you so much.